as well as our, our district size, that we just really felt that Dr. Carlin um, fit the district's needs at this point in time. And normally, I know it's unusual to talk about kind of a personnel matter like this, but being a superintendent in such a big position, but how much of an advantage does it, is it to have Dr. Carlin, who spent 27 years in this district in some capacity, teacher moving on and up into administration, how much of an advantage is that for him? For him? Yeah, for him and, you know, for the district as a whole. You know, he would probably have to answer that, mm -hmm. and he probably can't answer that mm -hmm. until he stop, starts walking in these shoes. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, and some people might say that there's somewhat of a disadvantage to that. Why would they say that? Because he hasn't been into any other district to gain experience in a different climate, mm -hmm. per se. Um, to bring to bring new knowledge and different thoughts back to this district. So, um, but overall, that's not a major concern of ours, or we we wouldn't have decided to go the direction we went. Um, but I think Dr. Carlin has has had so much experience in in all departments um, in, within our district, and I think he um, has grown with the district. I see. I think he has seen. The good financial times, the challenging times, and now the, the really rough times. Um, his wife is a teacher in the district, so he has that perspective. He's been a teacher in the district. He's seen technology grow from an infant that he helped deliver, basically, through this district. So, um, any other comments, board? You know, it's uh, in all of the extensive deliberation that we've had in, in, in this job that we've had of, of offering, making an offer. Of course, it's not done yet, uh, but certainly uh, uh, the interest strategy that Dr. Carlin had was impressive. Um, he is his own person. And uh, he communicated that he will be uh, a unique superintendent and not simply uh, carrying on from some past superintendent, um, that past superintendent's approach. So um, I think there was, again, as um, President and Dr. Hopkins has said, we like a lot of things about both candidates. And, um, and it made the decision very difficult. Um, so uh, I would just be able to reiterate uh, what's already been said, that the best fit at this time, with these circumstances, um, all due consideration, um, we think the offer was made to the right candidate. And we'll see how it turns out. I think it's also important to note that Monday we spent a little over two hours in formal interview with Dr. Dirksen. We had informal interview essentially at dinner um, as well for almost two hours. And the same with Dr. Carlin. We went into executive session at around 5.30 today and it is, we came out of executive session at 8.15. So this is not something that any of us took lightly we were very conscientious of spending the taxpayer money, and we believe we spent it well by using KASB to conduct the search. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, we all have day jobs, and so having someone there to do the survey for us and you know, using the survey method rather than having meetings here saved us some money. Um, rather than having Dr. Jordan from KASB come down and go over all of the applicants and doing it via Skype instead saved the school district funds. Um, so we did this as economically as possible, especially given the economic climate that we are in, um, and we did it very deliberately. Um, I'm glad that we went through the process um, so we could make that, that determination of who was going to be the right fit. I'm glad Dr. Carlin shined through on that, but you know, I just want to make it very clear that we were using the process to its utmost. 
we were not trying, we did not want to shortchange the district um, or any candidates either. So I'd have to say we're very, I am very proud of every person on this board because I think we worked through the process very well and our personalities just contributed to each other's thought process just like I would think the community would expect of the board. And, uh, and, and so I think uh, the community is a winner and, and the, uh, the process was very successful. Uh, I, I hope that the outcome will be very favorable in the, in the office. I have one last question. Um, we didn't obviously see what uh, happened with the, uh, you know, the consensus on the surveys that you had and, and all the opinions that you were able to get from from the parents and the students on what they were looking for during this process. So how does Dr. Carlin match with what you found out in those surveys? The surveys told <coughs> us, um, it told us a lot. It told us that we should be sensitive to the economic diversity in our community. It told us that early child development is an important part of what this district provides. It told us, um, generally speaking, that the community um, teachers, students, um, all members who filled out the survey, generally speaking, I know there's outliers, but generally speaking, um, feel that the district is going in the proper direction, that we're not needing a major overhaul and regrouping of our focus and our mission. So that was very reassuring, and in fact, separate from the process of superintendent replacement, that was that was really good information to get. Of course, we got some comments, you know, that um, felt that shared opinions that you know we might need to go in another direction. But overall, it was pretty overwhelming that we were going in the right direction. And so, since Dr. Carlin's been with this district and this, and these programs, we felt that that's was made this fit more appropriate for our district. Uh, I wanted to extend thank you everyone for allowing us to be a part of the process as much as you could yeah. and uh, you know, to relay that information to our listeners and, and, and our readers I'm sure Angie feels the same way so um, just want to say thanks. You're welcome. Uh, transparency is a huge huge part of the roles that we play here. I mean we are elected members obviously and um, we are have been entrusted with a major responsibility to replace Dr. Rafa. And none of us, when we ran for this position, thought or knew that we would be charged with this job. You know, we knew it was the job description, you know, hiring and firing the superintendent and to establish policies and to oversee if the policies are being upheld. We knew that. But, you know, in the back of your mind, you're kind of hoping that you don't have to do it. <laughs> so this was a new process to all of us. And uh, I think we all took it, I know we all took it very seriously. Every step was very serious. In fact, so serious that we're all emotionally and physically exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> That's my second last uh, question. Yeah. <laughs> the guys had more to more. This is I've been curious from the get-go. Um, how many candidates? Do you guys have any idea how many yeah, candidates we, there were in the beginning? We, um, I think we had eight. Okay. Um, plus or minus one or two, but I think there were eight. Originally. Um, yes. And and in all honesty, you know, um, I. Um, there one, thing, one thing. <laughs> one thing about the process that. With the survey results, and yeah. part of why we, we contract with the Kansas Association of School Boards is they take those survey results mm -hmm. and utilize them as a screening process. Right. But it's not just them, they bring in, I believe it's three outside superintendents to work with them to match the candidates with the screening process. Okay. So we get to see everything. Yeah. Uh, but they go through that process to facilitate our process. Okay. So that first meeting, there were eight, right? right? And then that's when we And we narrowed it to two. Okay. And the fact that we narrowed it to two, and it ended up being one internal and one external candidate, was not on purpose. Right. You know, we, we 
narrowed it to the top two candidates. Were there any other incumbents among the eight? No comment. We're not going to release any comments. All right, that's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank for rallying, coming over. Do we now, have any? So I was going to say, it was yeah. cool to be a part of the process. Yeah. Each of them question and yeah. share that with people. So. Yeah, if there was a weakness, I would say, who was going to do it over again? Yeah, we've gotten a lot of <laughs> problems with right. feedback yeah. from that, and good feedback. We yeah. didn't know that. Like yeah, but it, I think you know, the balancing during business day, you know, business yeah. hours, and kind of, we wanted to make sure the media had the best opportunity. Your questions were first, right. um, but there's the community only, really felt that, like they were left out. But there's yeah. also only so many hours in the day, yeah. and just like teachers are trying to scramble trying to find out how they're going to fit that extra lesson in, mm -hmm. you know, it's, you know, time management. I, yeah, I agree that we should have tried to find a better time, but unfortunately, there's only yes. so many hours in the day. Because they, they reviewed the school, yeah. and they had that time, and everybody was in the room, and then we had that time. Everyone. Done. On the rubric, we, right we had the community opportunity box marked because of the survey. But the community, in hindsight, deserved more opportunity, I think, to be part of the process. This was a hard week because you had the forum going on. And yeah. I really... I don't know why you're telling her that. I know. <laughs> I sat at home and watched the forum.